Oh, how was um Ruben's show the other night? Didn't go. I was oh. too tired. Oh, okay. I was too tired because I'm suffering from a horrific illness. Guys, welcome to Spearhead <laughs> Sundays. Uh, we're releasing this while I'm currently recovering from surgery. Um, this is what I look like at the moment. Look at that. Fuck, you look like shit. I look horrible. My head's the size of a football, <laughs> I assume. You look very ugly. Uh, hey. No, I, no, this one makes me uglier. This is the real... I'm in my real, like, spiral downwards in terms of physical attractiveness. Yeah, I was thinking about you the other night and you've had the worst two years. You talk about it a lot, but I was actually like, damn, you have, you're going to have, when this is all over, yeah. five terrible years in a row. Five? Yeah. What happened before COVID? You had you had the two years of lockdown yeah. and then you're going to have two years, like this year, next year. Yeah. And then inevitably something wrong is going to happen the year after. <laughs> Why are you putting another year on me for? Just, Don't say that. I'm just I'm looking guessing. forward to the next year. I'm just saying that probably that's what's going to happen. Don't say that. I need to not believe that. That's the one thing I'm fucking holding on to is when I get through the second surgery, I might get to do one thing I want to do. There's like another flu going around Spain at the moment. I hope I die on the table. <laughs> Guys, look. <laughs> you know what is good right now, pre-surgery? Mm. I've noticed that my teeth are getting better. They are. You notice that? Less overlap. Yeah, here. yeah, you're right. Yeah. Does it hurt a lot? Oh, so much. Heaps. It's it's like... But the rest of your teeth aren't even bad. Like the bottom teeth, your bottom teeth are fine. Yeah, the I don't think there's there's nothing wrong with my bottom teeth at all. Mm. It's just the top the top half of my jaw is too narrow. I have the opposite. The bottom teeth are fucked and my top teeth are nice. Which I reckon that's what you want. Mm. If if you have to choose which ones are fucked, your bottom teeth are covered a lot by your front teeth. Very Especially weird. when you got front teeth like Bugs Bunny over here. <laughs> that's hey. literally me. Yeah. Um I feel very weird with this microphone. I'm not used to it. I feel like I'm bending. Oh, I'm absolutely bending and and these ones these are Luke's mics that he brought from uh from his place. And uh, I I really fucking hate them, but mm. it, it looks good as a table setup. Oh, this is actually a lot better. I take yeah. it back. Luke's mics are great. I think this Thank you very much. I think this one's like broken. Uh, no, you just need a you just need a well. You just entertain everyone. Hey guys, welcome back to Spearhead Sundays, featuring a long-awaited guest, Keelan. Uh, I have not much else to say. I can talk about Big Brother for a bit if you like. No, that's please don't. Um. Maybe we could cut this part. This is not very interesting. I always thought when I was younger, when I'd listen to your show, yeah, when like you'd stop and go, I just need to get an asthma puffer, puffer, and yeah. thirty seconds later it would just be silent, yeah, or you'd hear you yelling in the background, "Where's where's my fucking puffer?" Yeah, uh, still happens though with this kind of stuff. What did you th What did you think? I used to think it was really funny. Yeah, I used to think this this man is bold. Yeah, just le <laughs> just leaving it in. That's that is, but that's if I was to edit out moments like that. Yeah, or or edit out me me saying no, I didn't go to Ruben's show. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that would be dishonest. I did look. I'm a good friend in the sense that I said twice that I would go. Yeah, I'm a bad friend in the sense that both times it turned out I was lying. I I was a good friend and I saw the show and I actually helped him out by bringing him a tripod. Wow, which he obviously hasn't returned. Ah, oh. since when I walked in. This camera was on a light tripod. Yeah, it was on a light stand. Yeah, it, it, apparently you know what you can do. With with my gear is just fucking show up to my house and take it, and and just not return it because that's that's all that's been happening to my shit <laughs> yeah. for the last fucking month. <laughs> oh, hey man, can I borrow your three and a half thousand dollar camera for free? Yeah, man, just bring it back on time. Oh, I'll think about it. Who did that? Luke did that to me. Oh, right, yeah. Right. To, to be fair, Luke does own half of that, but he also owns half of another one. Mm. So I think we just. Take one each and then start being real selfish and possessive over them. So what happened? Rafi came and picked it up the other day. Yeah, Rafi came and picked it up and, you know, Luke asked, oh, can we use it? I was like, yeah, for sure. Just bring it back on Monday. He's like, yeah, no worries. And then he didn't. And then on Monday he's like, hey, man, when did, when did you need that by? And I was like, oh, in about an hour. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, so he, got, he did get someone to drop oh, it off. <clears> in my head, good. Rafi was just going to drop it off to you. That's what I thought was going to happen. And the tripod. But it ended up back at Luke's house. Of so I think he was planning on just keeping it forever, <laughs> um, which is not a bad plan. And so someone had to drive from Diamond Creek back to Frankston to give it to you. Yeah. Like yeah. That. And, and, uh, and, and then didn't, didn't bring the tripod. So they'll yeah. have to make that trip back again, um, which is great. But look, that it looks could be worse. It could have been returned broken.
Which has never happened before. That just, <laughs> that just, could, that just is how that could have been worse. Yeah, it could be worse. They could have taken out all of the uh, the innards of the camera and replaced it with a bomb. Could be worse. They mm. could return it covered in Greek yogurt. Oh, I've done that. Yeah. See, this is why I'm not I'm not upset at Luke at all because I've taken it to to uh, a different state and yeah. had eggs thrown at it by How to Basic. This actually is the one you can tell because it's still covered in white all Fuck. over it. I got the I got the Greek yogurt one. Yeah. I wanted the other one. Let's swap them next time when because Luke's going to bring over his one on Luke and Lewis. Let's swap them. He won't know. Yeah. Good. Let's talk about Luke and Lewis ending. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's now, uh, I guess it's, it's over and that sucks and that's sad. Unfortunately, um, we, we had to film, we have to film the last two episodes a month before the end of the show. Yeah. So for us, it's like, it's over and it will be over a long time before it is for you guys. Mm. So even that's uh, weird. Us releasing the episode, talking about ending the show. Mm. We've known for about two months that we we're ending the show. Yeah. So before the comedy festival, we made the decision. Yes. And there were people coming up to us going, oh my God, I love the show. And it happened to me. It's at, the worst. Well. It's so, it makes me so sad. I got one, one message from some person who was like, oh, the show's helped me so much and this and that. And, and I'm so proud of you. And I can't wait to see what's next for the show. Yeah. And I was, and I just thought, I reckon you could wait. <laughs> I reckon, That's right. I reckon you're going to be waiting for a long time. Yeah. I, there was a guy who, who waited specifically for me and Ruben, like, <sighs> Waited for maybe mm. 40, 50 minutes, and then Meg came to the green room and got me. Mm. And I, I came out and he had all this look and all this stuff. He's like, I'm a big fan. I just listened to every single episode in a row in the last two weeks. What? I was like, wow, great. That's fantastic. And he was such surprised a- his brain was working after listening to that much of us. Yeah. And every time someone says that, because it happens regularly, I go, oh, sorry about the Zoom period. Yeah. And but they never find it as bad as we did. No, I think that I think the Zoom period for us was horrible to do yeah and a real pa- recording the hour when we recorded was fun everything around meeting up sending footage you editing it you oh. trying to release it on time was hell the sending the footage thing was fucking aids yes yeah. uh, i would be it'd be 10 11 i remember so many times you'd be streaming and i'd be like messaging you and you wouldn't see the messages yeah. for hours because you were streaming it please send me the footage <laughs> please send me the footage <laughs> yeah and uh, and and so often I would hit I would hit upload and then it would fail and then my stream would be about to start. I'm, yeah. like, oh, I'm sorry, man. I can't do both of these. It's yeah. stream or upload. Yeah. And and I need to pay rent. So so this guy's like, man, I love the show so much. And I'm like, oh, well, thank you for thank you for loving it so much. And I think Tyler was with me at yeah. the time. And he goes, I can't wait for the future. And I go, me too, man. Me too. And me and Tyler were just talking about how we knew the end was coming and he'd be mm. so upset. Yeah. Yeah. That's. that's- you know what sucked the most about the announcing the episode is is just reading the comments was mm. horrific, just sad. It sucks. Um, I think it's it's particular. It's the the right decision is to end it when it's at its highest point, instead of ending it when it's being done poorly, which is what yeah. it would end up being. But but that does that does make it more brutal for the audience since. It's, it's, really, it's really it's more kind for us to do a shit. It's more kind to you guys for us to do a terrible show for six months and then for you guys to go, please stop. Yeah. You know that would be the really kind thing to do, but unfortunately, you know, we've got too much pride in the show. I was writing an email to a brand today, mm. and they're asking for our numbers. Russell? Yeah, Russell Brand. Yeah, mm. uh, and they're asking for our numbers, and I'd sent a similar email to them back in March. Yeah, and the numbers are like. So much higher than they were even in March. And March was our highest month we ever had. Oh, wow. So it's a real shame. So we're making a huge mistake. We are making a massive <laughs> mistake financially as well. Yeah. We are this far away from you guys seeing any dollars. Yeah, I think uh, Luke and I did, like, we really, really thought about all of the times we've ever been paid from Luke and Lewis, and it was once. <laughs> <laughs> after, after the second Lukey's. We got like two hundred and fifty dollars each. That was the first. Oh yeah, the but second loogies. Not yeah. the third loogies. Yeah, that's right. We got no. We got no money for the yeah. third loogies. After the third loogies, the three of us had a three-way phone call and decided that the three of us weren't going to get paid nearly as much as anyone deserved. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And then Whitey was like, "Look, don't worry about paying me as much either." Well, Whitey's just made a billion dollars. He just became a billionaire the other day. Oh yeah, Did you hear that? Yeah, he sold like six businesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, did that actually happen? Good on him. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he sold his actual one and that made him $50 million cash. 
King. After tax. King shit. Yeah, I thought, you know what? I saw him <laughs> the other day and he was he was he was walking. You ever see like a really, really fat person walk? <laughs> he was walking like that. Yeah. Right. Because his pockets were full of cash. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Like Yeah, yeah, he, I know what you mean. He was like dragging his legs. He um if you go into the US, United Australia Party website, if mm. you go to funders, he's mm. number one on their website. You know, I was thinking the other day, <laughs> I really hope that right now when this episode comes out. We've we've got Prime Minister Clive Palmer. <laughs> I just think that would be so funny <laughs> if Clive crazy. Palmer was the Prime Minister and he's standing up there like just fucking shocked, like oh um uh well uh uh freedom freedom freedom. It would be Craig Kelly. Did you see the Chaser skit they did on yeah. the United Australia Party? So good. That was really funny. I didn't know that. So this this kid rocked up. Clive Palmer got into trouble. Uh, he's like a a billionaire, right? Um, who's the billionaire that tried to run for for mayor of New York, and no one liked him? But Rudy out- Giuliani. Yeah, he's like kind of like obese Rudy Giuliani if you're American. <laughs> no, Rudy Giuliani was the mayor of New York City in the '80s and actually turned it into what it was to a good city. No, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of a different guy with money that tried to run for mayor of New York recently. I think that was Whitey. Yeah, that was why. That's right. Yeah. So, so in New York, the the billionaire guy that tried to run for mayor, and he no one really liked him, but he was able to outspend everyone, so he had the most press coverage. No, That's I know Whitey who's in America. That. Yeah, yeah, Whitey. That. Yeah, Whitey. Um, but in Australia, it's Clive Palmer, and he just has billboards that just say like he, his biggest policy is fuck the two major parties. I like freedom, but like doesn't want to describe how he's going to achieve that. <laughs> so like you get like his supporters are like really kind of dumb, you know, like they see, they see one word that they like. Like I like the word freedom. That's um, a good word. Michael Bloomberg. Michael Bloomberg. Yeah. That's right. That's uh Whitey's alias. <laughs> um, and uh, he, yeah, he just uh, has no plans. He's a no. billionaire. Like his plan kind of is get enough votes for his party and then give those votes to the liberals so the liberals win and then they are more favorable to his businesses and he can continue on destroying the planet and building dinosaur parks. Freedom, freedom, freedom. Half of dinosaur which I park. love. And the Titanic 2. And the Titanic 2. See, why doesn't he just focus on that? I know. He's like uh he started TikTok. He's like <laughs> Australian Elon Musk really. Mm. Where where you know Elon Musk is really savvy with Twitter. And he engages with meme culture, uh, and he really knows how to how to like get the zeitgeist going. Whereas Clive Palmer was just like really big on Facebook, <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, instead of building you know rocket ships or or new ways of doing brain surgery or chips to put in brains or you know electric vehicles, he instead is like, I reckon I'm going to build a big dinosaur park. <laughs> Or, you know, you've heard of Titanic 1. <laughs> what about Titanic 2? He probably just needs a fucking boat that'll float when he's in it, yeah. you know? <laughs> that guy's so fat that he just needs a boat that will stay above the waterline, and that's Titanic 2. Or he wants to sit in the water with the world's biggest inflatable, like, floaties around his <laughs> arms, and he wants the boat to crash into him like an iceberg. <laughs> that's what he wants to do. <laughs> Those are his policies, and and that's why I think it would be very funny for him to be prime minister. And I'm putting him as number one. Fuck! Don't don't joke about that. Why? Like Th- this, there can be this episode comes out after the election. Yeah, okay. So joke about it. Joke about so it. I'm so okay. If we're joking, I'm gonna vote Labor. <laughs> <laughs> if you want me to tell a bloody joke, I'm gonna vote for those loony lefties. <laughs> it won't be easy under Albanese. <laughs> I fucking love those ads. They're so good. They're, you know what? I've, I've noticed the, the ads, I see them on YouTube all the time. There's probably one on this, ooh, right? Oh, gross. From the, from the liberals that don't are like... use YouTube Premium. Uh, no, the, the fucking thing is I have YouTube Poor. Premium. I have a YouTube Premium because yeah. I'm a fucking adult, okay? If anyone's watching this, I'm going to put a mid-roll right here. And if you had to watch that, it's because you're poor, okay? <laughs> And you and you don't know how to spend your money. YouTube Premium is absolutely worth the money. Oh, what? I just can use ad blocker, bro. Shut the fuck up. All right, you can listen to stuff with your phone locked. Mm. That's worth the money alone. I fall asleep listening to it every night, and I've never been interrupted with an ad. So good. Helps my sleep. I, I dude, YouTube Premium. Uh, you know what? 
what does ship me about YouTube Premium? Mm. Why don't? Why didn't they give us affiliate codes? Why didn't they give every like verified yeah. creator their own YouTube? Red or premium affiliate code. I signed up to it when I was 15. Yeah. When it first came out, when yeah. it was YouTube Red. Yeah. And I paid $11.99 for yeah. five years. Nice. And then, it, and then it just like changed. Now I pay $15. Yeah. But that's all right. It's tax deductible. I use it for research. Absolutely. <laughs> you know how much shit is, is tax deductible for me as a comedian? You know, I can claim like comic books and movies on tax as mm. inspiration. Yeah, yeah. My Spotify is 100% tax deductible because I use Spotify to yeah. research other podcasts. And so my tax agent said. Well, for now, because now Luke and Lewis is over, you actually are unemployed. <sighs> yeah, so. unemployed. But unemployed people aren't known for paying tax at all. But so. I can start my own business that makes no money and That's everything good. can be tax deductible. That's great. See, this is what they come to the podcast for, tax advice. Here's my biggest piece of advice. Don't pay it and then worry about that later. And in two years, you'll get a $10,000 tax bill and you won't be able to sleep at night. Way more than that, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How much for you? Uh, actually, not way more. I think my one uh, my one that I, I got this tax bill right before COVID started, it was like $12,000. And I was like, here's the, here's the good thing about tax bills is, and I actually learned this from Racka Racka. Yeah. I learned this from them, <laughs> right? Um. Two boys who we love, right? Now, I was with Raka Raka. They had two uh, boys from Adelaide. They're like stuntmen. And they're the loudest people I've ever met in my life. One, One of, of them, them dated is. Riley Reid. One of them dated Riley Reid. And I've known them for years. And to this day, Keelan, I don't know them apart. And, mm. I, and I have just coasted on yep. just going, hey, man. Hey, dude. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Yep. And, that's, and they both really like me. Well, there was the, the time that... And I treat both of them exactly the same. Your brother, you and I hung out with one of them. And I yep. didn't know which one it was yep. until about 45 minutes in. He was talking about the other one dating Riley Reid. There you go. And then I was like, I know the one now. Yeah, yeah. And I... Still don't know their name, but I can tell them I know their names. Danny and Michael. Yeah. I do not know which one, which name they belong to. I, think, I don't know. I think Danny dated Riley Reid. I think... I, I suspect... Now, this might hurt Michael's feelings, but I think I'm better friends with Danny. But also, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if I'm actually better friends with Michael. And which one fought in the Logan Paul fight? Couldn't tell you. One of them. <laughs> one of them, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, so that The guy who fought is someone who I like to call man. <laughs> Bro and dude a lot. That, and that's how I operate, right? There's also another There's another group of twins, the Nelson twins, in, uh, in Australia. They're stand-up comedians, right? Okay. Uh, they... Their whole thing is they're twins. They perform together. They look exactly the same. They wear the same outfits together. Like Danny and Michael, it's actually very rude of me to not know their names. That's rude of me. Yep. They have slightly different hair. They have very different personalities. Yes. Like varied. one's very loud. The other one's quite quiet. And they wear different outfits. Yeah, that's right. Right? So yep. me not knowing their names or not knowing them apart, rude of me. The Nelson twins, they show up in the same outfit. Who are these guys? Yeah. To the same gigs. And they perform together. Uh, and I, every time I have, I love them. I love both of them, but I literally cannot tell them apart and I don't know either of their names and I, I just won't learn it. If you're going to show up in the same outfit, you are just one organism. Oh. They might as well be Siamese twins. Yeah, okay. These guys and I, exactly they both the really like me and I, bo I like both of them, right? Or potentially I've only ever met one of them. The other one's always in the, in the other room going, this Lewis Spears guy's a cunt. I wouldn't know. Right. Well, I'd I'd say that they'd use that to their advantage. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But with paying tax or with not paying tax. Yeah. Yeah. I learned this trick from Raka Raka. Okay. Now, this story I'm about to tell you has nothing to do with tax, but you can apply it to tax okay. and debt in general. Okay. This is a good lesson for all of you guys listening. I'm in. I'm in debt. Yeah. With the tax man. I'm in heaps of debt. I uh, I'm, I made a lot a lot of money on cryptocurrency and afterpay shares. And then bought a house. Oh, yeah. And then didn't pay What tax. are you talking about? <laughs> Who said that? I didn't finish my story. And I won't. What I will say is... Is a house not tax deductible? I haven't talked to my accountant in a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'll say. Okay? Would anyone like to buy a Gucci jumper? What I learned from the Racka Racka boys is I was in the car with one of them. Could have been Danny. Could have yeah. been Michael. What color hair did they have? Brown. <laughs> 
I'll tell you what they look like. They're brown. Yeah. Hair. Yeah. Quite short. Yes. Uh, and uh, the guy in the car that I was with looked either like Danny or Michael. <laughs> nice smile. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> anyway, I'm in the car with I'm him. I'm sure it was one of them. We go in <laughs> to like pay parking with the boom gate oh, that closes. Yeah. Were you there for this? No, I wasn't, but I think I've heard about it. Go on. Yeah. So we go in and, and we go in and they, <laughs> they just, just don't buy a ticket. Yeah. Right. And then, uh, and then we go to the place and we have some food, whatever. And we come back out and I'm like, uh, oh, you didn't pay for a ticket. Aren't you going to buy one? And he goes, oh, no, no, no. I don't need to buy a ticket. Um, I usually do this to get out of paying for things. I'm like, what do you mean do what? And then he drives up to the boom gate and just holds down the horn. <laughs> and there's like three cars behind us. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, the, yeah. The cust- and then he hits the smashing like the help button on the machine. <laughs> and then this woman is like... Uh, Hey, uh, how can I help you? And uh, he goes, Oh, I uh, I can't get out. And then she goes, Did you buy a ticket? And then he starts doing this voice, and he goes, Oh, I just can't fucking get out of the ticket, man. I can't get out of the fucking ticket, man. And she goes, Have you bought a ticket? And she goes, Why me a ticket? I'm not fucking the car, but it's cars behind me. I can't fucking get out. <laughs> Literally, and she's like, Have you bought a ticket? And he goes, I don't bloody mean to buy a ticket. I'm really like, <laughs> I bought a ticket. Like, just acted fucking insane. And then the woman is like, What are you saying? And, and he goes, What are you saying? I can't understand you. I'm buying a ticket. I'm to get out of the car park. And then, and then the boom gate just opened and we drove away. Oh my God, that is, I hadn't heard of that one. That one, that's amazing. No consequences. You can do that to the tax office. Exactly. <laughs> so when the tax man calls you, Keelan, and goes, you owe us $10,000, you go, what do you mean you owe $10,000? And they just go, this guy's insane, he can't pay tax. <laughs> <laughs> and and you end your sentence, you go, I, I can afford to pay you $100 a month. And then all they hear is that and they go, oh, I got to get this guy off the phone. They go, they sign you up to $100 a month payment plan and a mark month? you down as insane and there you go. Jesus. Here's the thing with the tax man. It's not like, it's they're not going to take your house. They're not going to take your car. No. Because then you won't be able to make more money and you'll stop paying tax forever. They would much rather give you a manageable monthly bill that you can afford to pay off gradually so that you can keep running your business and keep making money and keep paying tax in future, right? So if you tell them that you can only afford $15 every 60 days, they might let you do it. That's It's unreal. all up to how confident you are and how insane you sound on the phone. Yeah, I spoke to my tax agent about this. I go, this crackhead's an amazing businessman. <laughs> I said, I said, can we, we do, can we do a payment plan of like a hundred bucks a week? That's all I can kind of afford right now. Yeah. And then she goes, a hundred bucks a week. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They'll take that. And how much do you owe? Nine grand. Man. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I d- stupidly, I owed 12 yeah. and this was pre COVID. I'm like, oh, I'm doing okay online. I've got a big tour coming up. I'll just get rid of this. I'll pay a thousand dollars a month. I literally could have just gone 100 bucks a month. You could still be paying it. Absolutely. Might as well be. That's all. The tax office is a scam. Why yeah. can't we like... Taxation is theft anyway. Everybody knows this. Yeah, I agree. Mm. Yeah, and I think that um, no one should be paid a livable wage. And I also yeah. think we should get rid of unions. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Except for the uh, the Palmer United Party. Yeah, yeah. Whatever the fuck that them. is. Um, United Australia Party? United UAP? Australia Party. Yeah. A bunch of signs around Frankston and every day you'll drive past one, you drive past the next day, it's destroyed. I love, I love seeing it. I really like, because here's the thing with the, the United Australia Party. I totally get, you see the sign, it just says freedom, freedom, fuck Labor and liberals. Yeah. I see that and I go, I like that. I, I agree with that entirely. Yeah, yeah. That's great. But then... I would just Google what are their policies. Like, oh, this is a billionaire. And the website has no policy. Really? Yeah. So do you reckon that all these people are just sucked? I think that either they've just been sucked in by... But how no, can you be sucked in by a sign and then you buy your own sign, right? It's it's the type of people... I don't... Do you buy your own sign? Is that how it works? Yeah, I think you have to buy... Oh, okay. Buy a sign. I mean, where the fuck are you getting know, signs from? I know in the... With the Liberal Party that they... Uh, they, They'll give they, you one? They send it, them out. They send like some poor staffer out to just go place them in places. No, I've seen if, some attached to houses. So that's oh, like I a, guess you pay for those That's like ones. a person. So yeah. I, I wonder if that's like those people, they're like, is that, it's an actual guy that supports it or if it's just a dude that works there. Because mm. if it is a guy that just works there, I actually have a sign for you to take home and it's advertising my YouTube channel. 
You can do that, I'm yeah. sure. And yeah. you just strap it to your, the front of your house. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think Phoebe's family will be too keen on that, but I'll do it for you. Well, you're the man of the house, so you make the decisions. Yeah, her dad doesn't matter. Yep, that's mm. right. That's right. Uh, I have a, a quick thing on the ATO. Similar, similar story in vain with what mm-hmm. Danny or Michael did. Yeah. Uh, I know a guy who runs a... Danny or Michael. What did I say? You said Danny and Michael. <laughs> Danny or Michael, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I no know idea who it was. It was one of them, though. That's for yeah. certain. You <laughs> can be certain about that. Uh, I know a gentleman who runs a car mechanic workshop. <laughs> <laughs> I know this gentleman as well. Yeah. Okay. And lovely guy. Fictional some, character, yeah, by the way. He has an employee. Yeah. Who he was... Who doesn't exist, <laughs> by no, the way. No, this is actually... This is true. This is about the employee, not about the owner of the business. Mm. Uh, but the business is fictional. The, bu- <laughs> the business and the, the owner of the business are fictional. Yeah. And this is all satire. Yeah. This guy's name isn't even Keeler. <laughs> and he pays his tax on time every month and so do yeah. I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so happens to be $1 a month. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can afford. That's all I can afford, bro. I've been through COVID. <laughs> I lost my job. Uh... uh so the, this this employee uh-huh. was doing a very bad job. It wasn't doing their job. Was forging their hours and kind of saying, "Oh, you know, I I had to go off to the to go help this customer and would be out for five or six hours." Yeah, being a bad employee, but the owner of the place didn't have the balls to just say, "Hey, mate, that's enough." You know, you, you're, you're fired. On, you're fired. Yeah. So they were trying to work out how he could do this. The guy then got a horrific speeding fine and ra- ran about a. Sorry, ran a bunch of red lights, can mm. I speak, and lost his license for 12 months. Yeah. Rocks up to work and goes, hey, boss, can't drive anymore. Perfect. And and they're like, oh, no, that's okay. Because you work for a mechanic, you can go to court and you can say, look, I work for a mechanic and it's okay. Yeah. And so what he did is he goes to mechanic and uh, he goes to the courts mm. and says, hey, I have a learning difficulty. <laughs> I'm... Uh, I'm I'm, I'm a retarded mechanic. <laughs> he goes, I'm retarded. <laughs> Actually, in court, says that. And then they go, they go, you're a fucking idiot. Like, they threw the book at him and were like, well, you just don't have your license anymore at all. You've lost it permanently. Oh, yeah, you can't tell someone yeah. you're mentally disabled and keep your license. They go, oh, yeah, it's one or the other. And so this business, whoever this person is that runs this business, yeah. was like, you're a fucking retard. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Oh, so, my God, that's awesome. I guess... Wait, so is he now like, did he just get in trouble or is he like classified as mentally disabled? <laughs> yes, he is and he's on disability. <laughs> that's, that's great. <laughs> yes. How do I get that? And he bought a boat. I don't have my license anyway. He bought a boat before he went on this, got all these fines. Yeah. So now he's just on a pension and has a boat. Oh man, he, what a fucking genius. He's so fucking hot in here. dude. I know. It's really, really hot. Yeah. That's 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 the curse of Rosie, the world's coldest woman. <laughs> I've never met a, a woman so cold. She, you could put her in an oven. She'd be like, "It's a bit cold in here. Can we get <laughs> can we get a heater in this oven?" That's right. Mm. I'm actually also very hot. This episode was brought to you by Manscaped. Use code oh, Spears. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Spears. This episode, yep, code Spears for twenty percent off the best uh, pube trimmer in the game. Uh, I've actually been using the, they, they've come up with lip balm and I'm, I'm using that shit every fucking day and it's so good. I actually need a new shaver. I've lost mine. Oh, really? My chest and my arms are hairy. <laughs> I noticed you've got uh, a normal arms. That's so strange for you. Isn't it weird? It is very but weird. It's a bit patchy. Have I got the code for you? What? <laughs> What is it? Uh, well, it's code Spears. Ooh, what 20% do I get? off and free shipping oh, at manscaped.com. That <laughs> shipping is where they get you, but not with my code. <laughs> yeah, not with my, my my code is where where you secure me the bag. Yeah. Um, and, and what do you get out of that? Oh, hardly <laughs> any money at all, actually. In fact, I, in fact, I think I get more money. More, uh, like I get the the product they send me is worth more than the amount of money that I receive. But I'm really hoping that as I grow the show. Mm. perhaps they'll end up paying me more money. Yeah. Which I asked for and they declined, but that's okay. Code Spears. Okay. Manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping. Don't Support the all. brands that, that do the bare minimum for our show. Yeah. No, Manscaped have actually been one of the sponsors that I've I've actually made uh, some money on, which is great. Two-in-one shampoo, of course. We all use that. We're on a big rush to Mate, get to work. If there's, if there's one thing I hate in a shower, it's more than one product. Mm. And, uh, well, actually, I, I don't mm. mind two products maximum. 
And that is two-in-one shampoo and conditioner and body wash only from Manscaped. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. What are you smirking about? You think about something else, Ronnie? <laughs> <laughs> you just remember something that made you laugh? Two in one shampoo. Yeah. That's, I, what's funny about that? I was late today. Yeah. It wasn't because I was you, taking you, up a lot of time using shampoo and conditioner. What were you doing instead? Oh, I was doing my other job, Luke and Lewis. Well, mate, that fucking business is it's on a, in a downward spiral right now. You and I'll tell, use, you, I'll tell you, I wouldn't be surprised if by now that business doesn't even exist. <sighs> yep. I could, oh, I'd be shocked if I was even in the country by the time this episode comes out. You're going to go to America for six weeks? I'm going to go for four or five weeks. I'm so fucking jealous. I, I want to, I want to, I literally talked about, talked about this with Jazz the other day. I was like, if by the end of these surgeries, I'm still doing like well, but not crushing it, let's sell the house and move. Yeah. Well, I was saying to, saying like when I, when I originally uh, had the idea for this trip in like yeah. March, I was saying to you, I was like, meet me in. New York. And I was really going... Let's spend two weeks in New York together, yeah. split the cost of accommodation. No, it'll be so much... You can, you can pay for it, that's fine. Pardon? Sorry? What's that? Mate, you're the one making all the money from Luke and Lewis. <laughs> I've made $250 in five years. <laughs> okay, well, all right. Uh, you can pay a quarter. Okay. I'll pay for the rest. Yep. But you Deal. sleep on the floor. If, if you can find a floor long enough, yes. <laughs> Which in, in New York, when you're paying 75% of the rent, will be a struggle. Well, that is a... Uh, uh, I'll sleep upright like a vampire. I'm going in the middle of July. I'm going literally in the last two weeks of July to New York City. Is that a popular period? That is peak summer. And uh, I didn't even consider it. Yeah. Every place I looked at was at least $180 a night. Really? So I'm going to New York City for five oh, nights. And <laughs> the currency is so fucked yeah. right now. Like, great for me because I get paid in US dollars. But if you want to buy anything from the US, you, you, it's so it's expensive. Fucked. It's I booked, like, a flight from San Francisco to mm. North Carolina. I yeah. was like, oh, that's bloody cheap. It cost me 900 Australian dollars. Wow. Uh, it's a very expensive trip. And I kind of thought, I was like, oh, you know, it will be all right. And I haven't saved in three months. Yeah. So I have the next month to save anything. And that's all $900. That's that's, uh, 20 years of work for me at Luke and Lewis. That's pretty good. That's that's a lot of money. Yeah. I don't work 20 years for that one flight. Um, But then I'm going to Munich meeting up with Phoebe, my Mm. girlfriend. I'm so fucking jealous. And that's only for a week because, yeah. And then I'm coming back to America, hopefully. Mm. I'm either going back to Australia or back to America. It depends how much money I have. So you might go for more than six weeks yeah that you should you should you should just like overstay your visa mm. like i really want to i really want to bump into you in la in 15 years and, um. and you like you speak mexican <laughs> like you work in the back of a cafe or back of a restaurant yeah earning like four dollars an hour i'm allowed to be there until october 5th so i think if i have like some spare money mm. i will just stay there until october 4th you're look you were looking in some like strange way of like Housing, trusted house sitters. Trusted it's a house real, sitters. No, it's a real like organization. I'll show you. Oh, I I don't doubt that it's real. I really don't think it should be real. So explain what it is. It's a, so it's a program where you can house sit for people for free. Yeah, and it's a it's a goes both ways. What's the, what's the term for it? It's a win win scenario. Yeah, of quid pro quo or quid quo pro. Y- you get your house looked after. Reciprocal. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. and your your cat gets fed. And I get free accommodation in a different city. Now, from your point of view, great idea, amazing, love cats, so good. I love free treating com. them well. Yeah, you get you, you get to hang out with sick animals, mm. right? Awesome. <laughs> imagine if I coughed because yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> imagine if, imagine if you owned a house, yeah, and you you just let some bloke. You ha- no, okay. You have to do background checks. Yeah, but there's, they, there's background checks, there's insurance involved. There are a lot of steps to make sure that you're not just going to go there and like become a hermit. Yeah, in the house. right. Do you remember when you threw piss at a woman in Frankston? On accident? Yeah, on accident. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you're but they're letting you in. I remember this that. This is what I mean. What do you? Oh, I'm not saying what you're you've saying. S- you've slipped through the cracks. <laughs> Is what I'm saying. I'm a friendly guy. You're a vandal. I've got a nice profile picture. I've got a nice photo of me and my girlfriend. Yeah. So that it looks like I'm a lovely fellow. This, did you hear what you just said? So it looks like <laughs> I'm a lovely fellow. Yeah. You're, this is like, what I mean. Like, I, well, I don't know. Great for you. Yeah. I don't know who the fuck would... I would never, ever just be like, yeah. Why isn't it an Airbnb? That's kind of what I'm 
suss about, but I think it is because it goes both ways. Hole? No, no, they're no. nice houses. Like the the places I'm looking at are nice houses. And I, I don't understand why they wouldn't just be Airbnbs. Yeah, I'm a bit confused by it as well. Maybe they don't want to clean the place, like manage the upkeep. That may be it, because it is kind of your responsibility to take care of the house. Mm. And if something goes wrong, it's on you. Right. It would be like if I looked after your house and I burned down the house, it's like yeah. Airbnb don't pay the insurance out. It's kind of on, kind of on me. But that's, again, worse for the yeah. owner. Like, I, you can't I, afford to buy a house. I don't but know. Like, because what if you just come over and, and, like, overfeed the cats heaps because you think they look sad? <laughs> I, wouldn't do, I wouldn't do that. Really? You wouldn't do that now? Because you've done it to me. <laughs> so you've learned since? I've learned, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I now live with two cats. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. Your cats are pathetic. Yes. Yeah. Don't, but no, they're not pathetic. They're manipulative fucking liars. Yeah, yeah. And you should not trust them. Anyway. I think I can get like a month stay or at least like two weeks stay here, two weeks stay there. Yeah. And the train travel from one city to another is so cheap. Yeah, that's cool. I like, so, I, I really like that. That's what I want to do. I, my, my kind of perfect world plan is, I mean, obviously this won't happen because as you've said, <laughs> <laughs> as you said, I've got one horrible mystery here. Robbie, dude, if I have one I'm more bad right. year. I'm right. I say it. I'm always right with you. Like last year I said you need one more thing and then you had a breakdown on a Zoom call. Yeah. This time I'm saying you're going to have one shitty year. Yeah. And Kill goes on a podcast. I reckon you're one thing away from snapping. And then <laughs> four months later I was in Tasmania. And, and you know what it was? It was my internet went out. That was it. <laughs> and like the next week I was like rocking in the shower having a panic attack going, I have to leave. I'm right though. You were right. So Someone, I've got one more year that I'm that. I, to be honest, I might not survive if it's one more <laughs> fucking year, right? But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get the fuck out of this country. I I hate it here. I'm over it. That's why I'm leaving for so long. Yeah. Oh, you know what my dream is, and I've been dreaming about this for years, mm. is to go down to Central Park in New York City. Yeah. Put in headphones. Yeah. And fall asleep. Yeah. And then wake up. Yeah. Not at night time, just like an hour later. Yeah, that's cool. I think. Central Park was so nice. Yeah, when you was, went, you I couldn't even. If you've never been there, you can't. I can't even describe how big it is. Mm. It's like Central Park is Melbourne CBD, but it's a park. Like you're in New York, and you go into the middle of the park, you cannot hear traffic anymore. No, it's and it's New York. Yeah, it's insane. It's like for for a country that, like, if you're homeless, they'll light you on fire for a laugh. <laughs> They really maintain that yeah. public thing well. Yeah. I've been dreaming about it for years. I yeah. remember you messaged me when you were in New York City and you were like, you just gave me some normal standard work message. Yeah. But then you also went, look at where I am. And it yeah. was really nice. And yeah. I was like, fuck, I'd love to do that. Have you been to Central Park before? Yeah, I have. Yeah. But only for like two hours. Yeah. I went to the John Lennon Memorial there and then walked I around and got a hot there. dog. Yeah. I went to the the carousel where they where they filmed The Punisher Scene where he kills a bunch of people. Yeah. Really cool. Um, but I my my one memory from Central Park. People think I'm lying. Because I think I posted I think I put this story in a caption of an Instagram photo, right? I was just sitting, like just sitting, like uh looking at my phone. Maybe maybe it was even when I was messaging you. Mm. I probably actually was. And this guy comes up to me and he goes, Hey dude, what's up? I'm like, Hi. He <laughs> goes, Bro, I love how you're sitting. <laughs> it's so cool. How are you sitting? Just like that. I like went on the grass. I was leaning, oh, one yeah. leg up, one leg out, yeah, the, leaning back. I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. I was I wasn't doing it on purpose. I was just sitting, right? Yeah. And he goes, I love how you're sitting. And I was like, King. thanks. And he goes, Can you take a photo of me sitting like that? <sighs> and I was like, uh yeah. That and then I was like, because I, you know. I didn't know how I was. I was just sitting. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so then I, I gave, I took a photo of him because he, he sat down and he looked at me and he literally was like looking at my leg and then his leg <laughs> and then like arranged his whole body and then got it perfect. And I took a photo of him. And then I was like, well, you have to take a photo of me now. Cause I was thinking like, dude, if, if however I'm sitting <laughs> has inspired a stranger to replicate it for their Instagram, yeah. I have to see how I'm sitting so I can just sit like this all the time. And it's just how you normally sit? And I gave him the phone and he took a photo of me and I looked at it and I was like, I'm just sitting down. 
<laughs> it was the weird. It was like the most surreal fucking experience ever. And then I put it on Instagram, and people thought it, I was joking. It's like j- just what happened. Who's Joe? Who's Joe? Joseph Green, who was supposed to be doing this episode, <laughs> but he got the day wrong. So now we're being blessed with Keelan Brown. Blessed. Um, yeah, but Joe Joe will be on later. Who's uh, Joe? Um, I'll see if I can try this find, find this photo. Yeah, that's so. But funny. yeah, I can't. Uh, New York is. I can't um, wait to go back. So excited, and it sounds yeah. like to Americans. So every American who I'm mm. friends with, and I say I can't wait to go to America to New York. They yeah. go, "Why the fuck would you want to go there?" It is because there is nothing like that here. New, uh, Melbourne is similar mm. in ways. Like you walk down some streets and go, "Man, I feel like I'm in Brooklyn," but it's, it's not just, the same. You know what? It's it's like the what I really liked was the not. I just like the energy of it, like how everyone was, it really felt like everyone was hustling and working and was like trying to earn their place there. Yeah. Which I loved because that's like kind of what I picture my life being like if I ever get to move there is like, I need to like earn me taking up space here. Like I got to prove myself here, which I thought was really cool. Um, Whereas in, you know, I feel like a lot of the culture in in, Ameri- in Australia is like, oh, you're trying to do something? Why? You think you're better than me? Yeah. It's like, well, no, I'm just trying to do something. Um, and also I just really like, I just think it's, it's such a funny city. Like just the idea that at 3am one day I went, I feel like a cookie and I just left the apartment and I, and I, and I didn't even Google like, where can I get a cookie? I just walked in one direction and I found a place. I just thought that was so funny that I, that you can do that. Like you can just walk in a direction at any time and find yeah. the thing you're after. That is what I miss about America is the 24 hour things. everything. Yeah. Going to a diner at 3 a.m. and getting a $12 steak is a highlight of my life. <laughs> yeah, I loved I loved walking. I think I got I think I was at a diner at like it was I was still jet lagged and because I was in New York, New York I just didn't fix my sleep schedule because I genuinely did not have to. It's almost more exciting at night, so I just yeah. stayed on Australian time because everything was still open. I'm flying into Honolulu nice. as, as like just for 20 hours. Just yep. I think that's going to be a bit of fun. Mm. But I'm only bringing a backpack with me on my trip. And cool. I'm not getting accommodation that night. So I've kind of just like planned that I'll yep. I'll go to some bar. Uh-huh. I'll grab dinner. Yes. And then at like 2 a.m. I'll go to a diner. And at 3 or 4 a.m. I'll just walk back to the airport and hope. Nice. Do this. I like that a lot. Okay, I found the photo of how I'm sitting. And I actually, I remembered it wrong. I was not sitting how I described. Are you ready for the coolest pose you've ever seen in your life? Mm-hmm. Wrong. You're not ready. <laughs> Here it is. Have a look at this. <laughs> yeah, that's how, that's how you sit. I'm just sitting. That's how you sit, yeah. Yeah, I'm just sitting. <laughs> Here's my sit. One to ten, how cool is it? I'm not even wearing... I thought like... Like I maybe oh maybe I was wearing a really cool outfit. I'm yeah. just wearing like a long sleeve t shirt and sitting. That's so funny. And and the guy was like, dude, how you're sitting is so cool. Yeah. Can you take a photo of me doing that for my Instagram? That is you're just sitting there. I'm just sitting. It might be just like an Australian thing. Can you just send that to me as well? Yeah. That's I'm uh, gonna replicate that when I'm in. Oh here, here's park. the quote. He goes uh, sitting in Central Park and this guy comes up to me and says, your sitting pose is really cool. Can you take a photo of me doing it for my gram? For my gram. My gram. So good. Um, there's a few things I wrote down that we can talk about. Yeah. Would you like to take a pic? Okay. All right. Um, the creator clash by the time this comes out is going to be very out of date. Yeah. Uh, so let's, uh, the, the doctor did that cheap shot. And uh, the event that iDubs did was very cool. Yeah. And then I was watching a bunch of stuff about iDubs and his real name is Ian. Yeah. I've uh, met Ian. He's a very lovely guy. And uh, I had a dream about him. And apparently I, I right. sat up straight in my bed yeah. and turned to Phoebe and said, who's that bloke who's friends with Ian? I was sleep talking. And, mm. I, and she didn't know who I was talking about and thought I meant her father-in-law. Like, <laughs> not father-in-law, her yeah. sister, whatever. Um, sister's boyfriend's dad. And I just kept going, no, who's the bloke who's friends with Ian? Yeah. Who's the bloke who's friends with Ian? And I think I was talking about Joji. <laughs> oh. I must, in my dream, I must have been talking about Joji. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, Ian's a lovely guy. I hung out with him in Australia when he came with, with Max uh, for, for like a day. Really, we got along really well. Really great guy. And then afterwards, uh, I invited him, I invited him on the show. 
And he said, uh, oh, I'm really busy, maybe next year. And, uh, and, and uh, it's still going here. Oh, that's okay. Well, we've got it on here, so it's fine. Guys, we just lost some recording, but that's right. We had a backup recording. Dude, how, how much has my life changed since Rosie came in with the bat? Hey, this would have happened if I was working with you. You make it sound like I never did anything. What do you mean? You make it sound like that wouldn't have, uh, we wouldn't have had this. You want setup. me to lie? <laughs> okay. All right. Very good. No, no you, you invented this. You know, Keelan actually owns Road, the business. No, Keelan does a great job here. <laughs> he does a really good job. Or so he would like you to believe. Bro, that's why I'm getting fired. That's that's the <laughs> that's the actual reason Luke and Lewis is ending is because they don't know how to fire me without yeah, hurting my just, feelings. Yeah. Oh man, could you go to court and tell them you're retarded? <laughs> <laughs> so we could just get rid of you without it being awkward. Bro. Um let's talk about your funeral because I know it's coming up soon. Oh, okay, so without making everyone sad, my yeah. pop is about to die. Oh. So I was on the way on the way back from seeing him the other day with yeah. my girlfriend mm. in the hospital and we were I was just like laughing in my head thinking about how ridiculous funerals are. Because yeah. people go to funerals and it's like you're all sad at the ceremony and you're all depressed and crying, but then you go get pissed at the wake. Mm. And it's like a huge celebration. I d I don't understand why it can't just be a huge celebration from I would like it to be nice. Yeah. So I, I planned it out and I think this is really fun. I want this funeral to be, you know, those people who rock up to a funeral, but then have to go to work. Mm. I want. Yeah, I remember that sometimes kids would go to a funeral before school <laughs> and I would always think, let them have the day off. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck are you doing? All right, off to school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your grandfather just died, but you, you have to learn grade three. Yeah, what are they doing? Um, so I want the people who have to go somewhere yeah. to be like, oh, fuck, I'm missing out. That's kind yeah, of how I want good. to be. You want to you want to incite FOMO. So I want a bit of fun, like at the yeah. at the mm -hmm. ceremony where there's all the speeches. I want a comedian to be doing stand up. <laughs> okay, but not right. just like stand up. Like, oh, I'm tall. How funny is that? Hey! <laughs> like, yeah. like, kind of, you know, the roast of me, but also yeah. participation games. Like, there's prizes. Crowd work. <laughs> <laughs> there's prizes. Hey, uh, hey, what are you, what are you doing? It's your mom. She's in hysterics. <laughs> oh, you died so young, and. And everyone to be having fun. Yeah. Because I want laughter. I want it to be like, yeah. fuck, this is good. He was... That's a tough gig. Yeah. I'm just picturing myself as, as the, the stand-up. Because... Will you do it for free? I Well, we can talk about that. <laughs> I think, what are you going to do with the money? You're dead, right? So don't, don't cheap out now. You know What, are you going to take it with you? Okay? I need it more than you. You're in a hole. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I was just going to say, I don't... I think that if you have a comedian, you can't have someone who knew you. <laughs> Why? Well, I just think that it would be very, very easy to do a funny best man speech. Very difficult to do a funny eulogy. You could do it. You know, you know enough about me that you could make a funny eulogy. <laughs> yeah, I could. Yeah, but here's the thing, Keelan. I think I could do a funny eulogy for your mum. <laughs> I reckon I could. I reckon I'd crack your mum for sure. Even if she was like, let's say you die next week. I still think I reckon if your funeral was like. Uh, more like a month after your death. Yeah. I yeah. could definitely crack her. If it was a week after, I might struggle. But I, I think I would nail that. I just don't think I could make like your like your auntie laugh. <laughs> you know, someone who who is is really there at the funeral for your mum, not for you. Yeah, you're right. I think those people who don't really know you and don't know me, and if I'm going up there, yeah, so one time in Frankston, Keelan threw piss at a woman <laughs> accidentally. That's yeah. our Keelan. <laughs> I think like like Luke might laugh. He'd be attending via Zoom. He's during. <laughs> right? I'd have him on FaceTime. Luke wouldn't cancel his show to come home for my funeral? No way. No, absolutely not. What if he's doing a big show? Oh, okay. If it's a thousand seats or more, then sure, go for it. Yeah, well, that's, that's all he does now. <laughs> um, so I think he, he'd be attending via Zoom. Yeah. I, I think like halfway through the funeral, you might hear, welcome to the stage. You go, sorry, guys, I got to go. <laughs> right? I so think, I think so funny, like the yeah. idea of people laughing. No, I think that's cool. And like silly participation games. But what do you mean? Someone a participation give me a verb. Game? What do you mean a participation game at a funeral? I don't know. I just imagine like give me a verb, and some <laughs> some guy at the back yells out grieving, <laughs> or like uh, you know prizes. What 
It's what do you win at Keelan's funeral? I don't know. Because something it's fun got to be good. Like, it has to be a hilarious prize. Yeah, I guess maybe like a whoopee cushion. <laughs> Uh, and then the I said that's my dad and he wasn't too impressed. Made I, my stepmom laugh a lot though. That's good. Yeah. She hates you then. <laughs> um, <laughs> I saw something that really made me laugh. I saw a TikTok of a guy who obviously died young and as they were lowering him in the in, in the ground, <laughs> okay, yeah. like an MP3 starts to play of his voice going, let me out, I'm not dead. And yeah. like banging on and telling a bunch of jokes and everyone was laughing and it was really funny for about a minute and then it went on for two more minutes and then it was like oh <laughs> too far yeah and and then so the other thing is that oh no, i'll tell about the song later yeah okay it will be phoebe's job or someone really close like too inappropriately close to me to go up to people when if they're wearing black mm. to say sorry you were not welcome go home and get if changed they're black. No, no 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 if they're wearing black oh okay that's what i said yeah no, I'm just... okay um <laughs> If anyone's wearing black or like yeah. dark colors, like, sorry, you're not welcome. Go home and change and you, you can come back. That's good. I yeah. like that. Yeah. Dad, yeah. I said that to my dad last night and he got really angry. He, he wants to wear black to your funeral. <laughs> he goes, you can't just, you can't control who comes to your funeral. You can't do that. You can control the dress code. That's you know? right. Like That's I, I said, I if, said, it's my funeral. If it's you showed decision. up to a funeral with your cock out, they go, can you please leave? Mm. Apparently, apparently you're supposed to let anyone <clears throat> come to a funeral. Is that true? Sound off below. I think it would just be um, uh, awkward to say no. Yeah, we should true. test that. Should we go down to the <laughs> local funeral parlor and just see what's on? Oh, yeah. Have a look at the program. Like it's a, like it's a cinema. Oh, maybe, oh, David Charles, <laughs> 73. Oh, this looks good. Charlotte Brown, three. <laughs> uh, and then the last thing, I think this one's really good. I've yeah. always thought... Mm. I hate the idea of a sad song. Like when yeah. my dad is being taken out in the yeah. casket thing, he wants this song called played called Death Is Not The End by Nick Cave. It's a really slow and sad song. Bit wanky. And I want this song. Oh, my YouTube's not working. My mum wants uh, Celebrate by Madonna. I like Celebrate. That. I think that's cool. <laughs> this part. Nice. Nice. I could cry to this. Yeah, but this is the, the killer. Yeah. I said this and it made me fucking die crying. Mm. No, no pun intended. Luckily we're planning this bloody funeral. Um, I want, as my funeral, as my coffin's been lowered, yeah. I want the chorus to play. Yeah. But then as the chorus finishes up and they do the other stuff, yeah. someone to raise me back up. <laughs> <laughs> and then when the chorus oh, plays like again, go down. Yeah. This happens three times. Yeah, I think it would be <laughs> so funny. That's good. And, and no, it, as you're being raised up, the chorus plays in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, but I think that that would just be like real symbolic of me as a person of just like all these silly mm. dumb things. I like that a lot. I think fun. that's really good. And then and and like when you, you go down for the third time and you think it's all over, uh, a bottle of piss launches <laughs> from the grave just yeah. up and to wherever your mum's <laughs> sitting, like in a general area. <laughs> Maybe you get it. Maybe you don't. It's all yeah. a bit of fun, <laughs> and and just and just for it to be like a lot of fun. And there's a list, and there's a lot of people not welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You don't send out invitations. You send out a list of band attendees. <laughs> no, there's I a like the co the coffin thing's great. That's such a good idea. Yeah. I reckon, like on the third one, like right before you come up, it you go you so you go down and you go up, and everyone laughs. Yeah. You go down, and then everyone thinks it's. It's over, you know, and people start getting sad. And then all of a sudden the music <laughs> starts to pick up softly and it's your voice going, one more time. And then you come up and you go down. Yeah. That would be So good. I think if I'm ever diagnosed with something, yeah. I'll just like, I'll become a director because I'd be a bit of a perfectionist on that. That would have to be done perfectly. You love producing an event. Yeah. You really do. It would It would have to be done right. And, and in true Keelan fashion, it would be live streamed on YouTube. <laughs> And there'd be audio recordings on of your voice that play for the stream, but not for people <laughs> at the event that say, what are you poor? Give me more money. Yeah, this is right. expensive. Yeah, that's good. That's very funny. And, and, and also in true Keelan fashion, there'd be heaps of technical difficulties <laughs> for the stream. Yeah, Whitey would be doing the tech side. Of yeah, stress, <laughs> doing six jobs at once. And well, seven because you're not there. Not getting paid for it either. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I think that's, 
Mm. That's my funeral. Um, you're That's all welcome great. to join. That's good. Come along. Okay. Yeah, if I can make it, yeah. And the last thing, like when my uncle died, I was about yeah. five years old, when his coffin was lowered, they all opened like a slab and just had beer or pulled one in for him. So I think I mm. won the same thing, but with like Coca-Cola. Yeah. And just like all my close friends, you guys can come. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But we might be on the inner circle of Coke pourers. <laughs> no, no, you guys can do that. Illuminati. That's yeah, that's good. Um, I like that. Yeah, and I also don't think I want to be buried in a coffin. How about this? I just want to be buried. How about this? Okay, great that you've, you're you upset with a coffin, okay? I think this goes really nicely with the Coke, okay? So you get lowered in what appears to be a coffin yeah. three times. Right? <laughs> up, down, up, down. And then the, the Coke bearers come and we pour Coke over the coffin, right? What we think, what everyone thinks <laughs> of the coffin. Turns out the coffin is actually a giant box made out of Mentos, painted to look like wood. And we pour the Coke in <laughs> and then your body just explodes out and then the song plays. Oh, da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. So there'll be a bit of production involved and yeah. I might require a bit of funding, but... Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. That's and the coke bearers have no idea that it's going to happen, <laughs> and like your limp corpse just flailing around. Yeah, and then you guys can do like a follow up <clears throat> Luke and Lewis episode, just about the night. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, yeah. the the however the bi yearly Luke and Lewis reunion podcast we yeah, do. That's good. All right. corpse is like in the background, <laughs> rotting, covered in like coke and Mentos. Yeah, um, I'm 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 chuffed with that. That's good. Great. Well, I think that's a great. Way to end it. Um, stay tuned for Keelan's funeral. Tickets will be on sale very soon. Um, I think this is a great business opportunity for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you did you finish know. your drink? I did. Great. So that'll be happening in the next couple of weeks, guys. I'll get tickets on sale now. <laughs> um, <laughs> he doesn't have much longer with us. Um, but uh, thank you very much for listening. I don't know when this is coming out, but I'm, I'm still recovering. So if you want to uh, get like live updates of my recovery, that's all happening over on Patreon. Jazz is posting photos and, uh, and videos and stuff. Nothing gross. I don't want to gross you guys out, but just kind of putting it up there. Uh, that's where it is. And uh, thank you very much for your support. I hope you guys are still listening and I, ho I hope I'm still alive. And I'm an unemployed. So if you have yep. a job for me. Yep. Yep. I'd, if you have a job for me, hit me up. Have a shit one. Bye. Bye.